Okay, so here is where we left off in MATLAB. Okay, so um, we have an SER model, but we're going to change this to V2. It's still the SER model, but we're going to have um, different time periods. So I'm going to call this V2. Um, and I should save this right away. So we're just going to put V2 at the end of that um, because this is a more up to date model. And this is the one that will have three different time periods. Okay. So time period one um, will be pre intervention. Okay. So, oh, so we should add that to our comments. There are three time periods representing uh, pre intervention. to the next line, um, intervention, and we'll just call it post-intervention for now. Oh, uh, well, let's stick with opening up and opening up. Okay, um, so it's pretty obvious in our code, we don't just have an A anymore, we have an A1. I think we said, let's make that a four. Right. Um, now, actually, let's just see what happens. I'm going to change that to A equals four, and I'm going to run the code again. And you can see we have a pretty big spike. All right, um, just a little bit bigger than before. And now we're going to talk about this more in the future. Um, but if you look at the red curve, I can see where the maximum value of I is. Whoops, I should have capital I for infection. If I type max I in the command window down here, it tells me that we have a maximum infection rate of 17.6% roughly, okay? Um, so that doesn't mean that only 17.6% of people were infected. It means that at one time, that looks like it's around week 13, we had 17.6% of the population infected. If we want to know how many people were infected overall, we should look at um, how many recovered or were removed. Um, so if we do the max of R, we get 99.3%. The only reason you would be removed or recovered, we'll say for now, is that you had been sick. So about 99% of the population was sick at some point. Um, but it peaked at about 17%, all right? If 17% of people in New Jersey were sick simultaneously, um, we would have overrun our hospital system. So this would be a disaster. Um, and that's what the government saw coming. Um, there would have been a complete collapse in the medical system. And so interventions needed to take place. So we'll make the four just A1. Then we'll move on to A2. Um, and that we said, I think, was about 0 0.8, okay? Um, and this is the, we'll say, uh, coefficient during intervention. And that's weeks to the negative one. Okay, oh, I forgot a semicolon in there. Okay, so that will throw us off a little bit. There we go. Um, and now we need an A3 value. We said that that should be maybe 1.4, I believe. Okay, and this is the coefficient during opening in weeks raised to the negative one. Uh, but an important thing for this model is to know when we're doing each of these things, okay? When are we um, going to start with A2? Uh, A1 is easy. That's going to start at time zero, um, where the time is in weeks. Um, but A2 has to start at T2. Okay, so let's just call it T2 equals, um, let's say that we didn't begin to intervene for eight weeks. The 
uh, the virus was traveling around the world. Probably some of it was in New Jersey well before we knew um, that it was here. And so let's say it was about eight weeks before we realized we had a serious problem and needed to do it, do anything about it. So this is the time at which intervention begins. And that's measured in weeks. So eight weeks in, we're gonna pretend that we started getting serious about this, right? Um, and then it looks like, and we've been home um, now for and about eight weeks. Let's just say it takes took about 10 weeks before we began to open up the economy. Um, so we'll call that T3, the opening of the economy. And uh, if that's 10 weeks, that's 10 weeks beyond the eight weeks. So it's happening at about week 18. All right. um, time to reopen economy. Or uh, I think we're using the word open, let's say to open up. Um, this is with, obviously with some restrictions still. Um, otherwise that number, if we just open up and say, do whatever you want, the number jumps right back up to the number four that we have up here, or at least a three or something like that. Uh, a number a lot bigger than we would want it to be. All right, um, so T3 will be at 18 weeks. If we run the code now, it'll crash because we just introduced a few variables. Um, and, um, oh, actually it didn't crash because I think I didn't, I have things still in memory. So in line seven, I'm going to clear the memory. And then if I run this program, it will crash or it certainly should crash when I go to run it. Sure enough, it crashed because notice down here, it says I need to have an A value and I don't have an A value. I have an A1 value an A2 and an A3 value. All right, so we have three different A's, so we need to change our code for where A appears. Turns out A only appears at this point in the code. I just highlighted it, highlighted it, and you can see there's, there's nowhere else that A appears. So all I need to do is create three different rates at which the exposed pool can be growing. Okay, um, the rate when it's A1, A2, and A3, all right? Um, so let's figure out what we can do here, okay? So if T of IT, this will be the time that we're on, is less than T2, think about what phase we're in, all right? If we're below T2, T2 is when intervention, and intervention begins, um, that means we're in the stage before intervention. So if that's true, we want to use A1, right? Um, now let me actually leave a little space in the code here because we're gonna put a few different options in. So let's put a few spaces in here. Um, so we have that if statement, we should probably end the if statement, right? Um, but we'll use, be using A1 if the first thing is true, all right? Um, then if that's true, um, if that's not true, we can go on to another case. We can use an else if. So if T of IT is less than T3, that's when we begin to open up the, the economy, we are guaranteed if we get to this else if statement that we are beyond time two. Okay, so we don't have to worry about whether we're in um, the using A1 anymore, because we won't get to this part of the code if we still are before time two. So I can take this line of code, let me actually put a tab in there, so it's indented well. Let me copy this and put it right down here, because we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but we're not going to use A1, we will use A2, um, because we are in the, um, the period of intervention, right? And then if we're beyond the period of intervention, we don't need an else if because we know that if we have gotten, um, are beyond time two and are beyond time three, that we are in the third time period. So we can just use the same code, but now we'll use A3. So all we've done here is we've taken our um, 
the differential equation for the rate at which the exposure should be growing. And we've just allowed it to take on any one of the three A values um, with this simple logic flow um, using if, else, if, else, all right? Um, so hopefully that's clear. Um, the first two lines would put me in stage one. The second two lines put me in you know, time period two, or phase two. And then the last option means I'm opening up the economy and I'm in stage three, all right? Um, no matter which option I use, I will add to the exposed population, whatever that rate of change was times the length of time uh, for which we were doing it. Okay, so now I can run this and let's see what the graphs look like. Lo and behold, it, it actually worked, okay, um, which is shocking that there are no errors um, when we first did this. I don't know if you were so lucky. If you weren't, pause the video and find out where your errors are. Um, but some very interesting things are going on. Okay, so you can see we began our intervention at week eight and some very significant things happen at week eight in the graph. Okay, so I think I can highlight this and let me grab my zoom lens. Okay, so if we zoom in to around week eight and highlight it, you can see um, there's a kind of a kink in the curves, all right? Um, the susceptible curve has a kink where it was beginning to drop very quickly, which is bad. That means that a lot of people had been getting sick and it was happening faster and faster and it sort of levels off a bit. Um, more interestingly, we can see what's happening here in the green curve. So once again, I can zoom in and see what's happening, okay? So our exposed population peaks right at week eight. As soon as the government takes strict measures and people begin staying at home and social distancing and hopefully washing their hands better, um, we can see there's a quick drop off um, in the exposed population. It was going up exponentially um, and then suddenly it's coming down. So there's an, an immediate response in the exposed population. Uh, but you can see the infections don't peak um, until several weeks later. And also um, in New Jersey, we may have seen the known infections going up a lot, um, but it doesn't mean there weren't infections we didn't know about earlier. Our testing was so inadequate that um, we may have had more infections earlier that we just didn't know about. You can see the recovered population growing, but um, we're really interested in um, this infection rate because that will determine a certain proportion of those people need to go to a hospital and certain proportion of those need ventilators. Um, and so we don't want this infection rate to get too high, all right? Um, but let me regraph this. Remember before how we had reached an infection rate of about 17 and a half percent when we only had one A value. Um, now let's figure out what the max of I is by just typing it in. And it looks like our rate is down to you know, about 2.8% of the population was the most that were infected at any given time, right? That's still a large number, all right? Um, when you think of a population of 9 million, that's going to be um, a large amount of people. Um, and it probably would still overwhelm our hospital system, but that's a lot better than 17.5%. Um, so the interventions, um, bringing that A2 value down quickly um, are important, but there's actually something else you can see. Um, let's look at the part of the graph um, down low here. Let's look at the infections and the exposed population. Um, and to do that, look, I'm going to play with Y max. You can see that the interesting thing about infections are all happening um, well below 20%, probably below 10% of the total population. So I'm going to make my maximum Y, whoops, uh, number lock, 0.1. All right, so that would be 10% and look at the graph again. Okay, so some interesting things happen over the course of the year, all right? There's a window of time right around eight weeks, the exposures drop off because of interventions. But then remember at week 18, ah, we removed our um, strictest guidelines, and we went into a, a, 
a different phase, a third phase where we're trying to open up the economy and the amount of people exposed goes up significantly um, in this you know, period. It looks like around 26 weeks or so, it's gonna reach a new high level, uh, a local maximum, if you will, um, which is not as high as the peak was before. Um, but there's a second peak in exposure, I'm sorry, in the infection rate um, right out there around um, you know, week 28 or so. Okay, so there's a delay between um, you know, when we uh, remove some of the restrictions and what happens um, to the infection rate. So while we remove the restrictions around week 18, it's not until about 10 weeks later um, that the infection rate has grown substantially again um, before it dies down. Now, the reason it dies down is because the uh, recovered population has grown, uh, meaning a lot of people have already been sick. And um, so the reason there are just fewer people left in the susceptible pool. Um, so by the time we reach week 52, um, the susceptible population has dropped a lot, and that's what's causing the infection rate to go down um, in the long run. Okay, so once again, if I run this in the full screen view, oh, let me go back to 1.1 so I can see everything. Um, you can see the recovered population is somewhere, we can figure out what that is, um, the max of R or the removed population, I should say, um, where a certain percentage of them did not recover. Um, so about 64% of the population has already been sick. Um, and so only you know, 36% roughly is still available to be sick. And that's why the infection rate starts to go down because there are fewer people um, left who can get sick. Okay, so now we have a working model um, that has three different rates for the transmission of, um, of COVID-19 um, that kind of correspond to what we have um, in reality. 